Hello, my friends. Rebecca Overson here with The Art of Building a Successful Massage Practice. And I am so excited about our guest today. I want you guys to meet Carrie Miller. She's in Flint Township, Michigan in the United States. And I met Carrie in March of 2017. And in her own words, she was lost. 11 years into her career, she was just bouncing around at a bunch of different chiropractic offices and just really trying to scrape by doing something that was important to her and that she loved. Like many of you, she's been in the shoes of a struggling massage therapist just trying to make sense of her skills and make a good living. Now, um, when she first, when she first uh, approached me, she was scrambling just to make about $36,000 a year and she was on that track for five years. And this, you guys are gonna love this. Um, when I helped her open her own practice and really get successful, she grossed over 47,000, her second year 60,000, and this year she's on track to hit 70,000. And it's just super inspiring. I can't wait for you guys to hear directly from her about some of the the shifts in her thinking and also in business strategy that were absolutely critical factors in her being able to take control over her practice as a massage therapist. And instead of giving away her time and her money and her energy to other people, how she was able to recapture that for herself and be able to build something that was sustaining and fulfilling for her. It's very, very exciting. I love Carrie. I've known her for over two years now. Gosh, has it been two? Yeah, over two years now. And um, have, you know, of course, worked with her in my eight-week program, as well as, you know, some one-on-one -on -one work that I rarely offer. <laughs> but um, she's just a fantastic human, and I'm very, very excited to have her uh, join us. So let me just see don't see her yet as available. Robin, could you ping Carrie and or maybe tag her so that we, she, we can get her over here in the right place? And for those of you that are new to the group, welcome, welcome. I'm Rebecca Diazavedo Overson, and I know that's a mouthful. <laughs> I'm working on it. Um, and, you know, I've been a massage therapist since 1995. And I struggled and failed for the first eight years of my practice. I was very, very skilled and very outgoing and very passionate about the healing work that I did, but I was utterly clueless about how to run a business. So, you know, worst case scenario happened. I had to fold up, quit and go get a job. And then a couple of years later, I came back totally focused with a lot of business skills in my pocket and I built a thriving practice almost overnight. So that was 14 years into my career. And I ran that practice for 10 years. It was extremely successful. And I sold the practice and I now help massage therapists build their own empires, build their own thriving private practices through mindset, strategy, accountability, you know, coaching, mentoring, all of those good things. So very excited to have you here as, as our group or if you're watching this through my YouTube channel or something different, we are broadcasting live today through the Art of Building a Successful Massage Practice, which is a free Facebook group for massage therapists that are serious about success. Okay, looks like Carrie's here, so we're going to bring her to the screen. Better to hear it in, in her own words, okay? So this will take just a minute to get it set up, and then we're going to rock and roll. Hi, Carrie. I love your shirt. Hello. Is oh, it, thank is, you. Is that scrub? Like, do you have a work uniform? I forget. Are those scrubs or is that just a cool shirt? <laughs> it's, it's scrubs. Yeah. Yeah. The cool. scrubs. I'm a fan of cool scrubs, you know, not yeah. the crazy, crazy boxy ones or Mickey Mouse ones. You're rocking it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. So, all right. So why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, let everybody know who you are, uh, where you practice, um, how long you've been a massage therapist, and then what your niche is would be awesome. Okay. So my name is Carrie. Um, I have been a massage therapist for 13, 14, 13, 14 years now. Um, been in practice for myself for three. Um, I practice in Flint, Michigan, Flint Township, Michigan. Um, and my niche is athletes and injury and surgery recovery. Yay. I love it. And how did you, um, how did you find me? It was. I over, found you was on March of 2017. I looked at my, I have your application, your original application up. So yeah. Yeah. So I found I... you on Facebook. 
Cool. You are in my Facebook group. I think you are one of the original people in my Facebook group. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I had started my practice January of 2017. I opened my doors on January 2nd mm. and uh, decided that I needed to find some support or what, find out what other therapists were doing. Or so I just was scouring the internet and Facebook for anything and everything to help me. I and I that. happened upon your group and I don't know how long I was in your group. I had been watching some of your Sunday Facebook lives and, uh, and I can't remember if I watched your five shifts before or after I talked to you. Uh, I don't but, think I had it out at that time. I think it would have had to be after, I think. It must have been after then. Yeah. But um, some of your videos that I watched, your live Facebooks, when, when you were doing them, really resonated with me. And I said, you know what? <laughs> She's it. I need to <laughs> talk to her. <laughs> I'm so, so glad you I did. I, I booked my call with you. And it was a game changer for me. Mm. So, so share what, um, share some of the outcomes that you created, you know, in eight weeks or just, you know, just share with us just what, what happened in the program and where are you now? And then we'll, we'll back up and, and kind of walk everybody else through the whole process that it took to get you where you are now. Okay. So, um, I had some goals for when I went through the program and, Actually, they have kind of morphed and changed since then, in, uh, which is a good thing. Um, I had been floundering, like I said, for, what, three months, three or four months before I found you on my own and um, needed some help. And the things that we did in the academy were just, were huge. Um, in going from seeing 10 to 12 clients a week to having a practice that is booked four weeks out has been awesome. <laughs> and so great. <laughs> just <laughs> grateful, eternally grateful mm. that I have actually, I can set my own schedule and work as much or as little as I want and still have the ability to support myself and do the things I want to do. It's so great. And I wouldn't have it any other way. That's all I want for you guys right there. <laughs> we're, I think we're done. <laughs> so, but let's talk specifics because you did say, okay, so before the program, you're working in 10 to 12 clients a week. You said a slow week would be like eight. You said after the program, you doubled the number of clients you saw in a week. You went from 10, 10 to 12 to 18 to 20. Now you're scheduling on average 23 a week and you're booked out. You said four weeks. That's extraordinary. That's extraordinary. Now, there were two specific things that you mentioned that were really important to you out of everything that we covered in the academy. Number one was numbers, and then the other one was niche. So can you talk about that? Like, what was the shift in your thinking about the number side of the business? Let's start there first. So knowledge is power. <laughs> Knowing your numbers, even if you're afraid or don't know how, do it anyway. Um, knowing what you're making and how you're making it leads you to making more and, and doing it better. Um, and it also shows you what's not working um, so that you can tweak it or change it or whatever you need to do to, to make it work. Mm. Um, you know, before the academy, I, I had, I, I, I keep what I, what I call my Bible is I write down all my appointments every day, what, they, what session they had as far as length, if they had any add-ons, how they paid and what they paid. Um, and that's all I was doing. And I, I mean, I didn't care what the totals were, what that meant, how many new clients I was seeing. I was like, I have my list. If I ever need anything, I can just go back and look. You know, but going through the academy, you know, I... I didn't have any new clients last month. Wow. Okay. What does that mean? You know? Mm. So I only made $2,500 last month, but going through the Academy, I made $2,500 last week. Yeah. You know, that's the difference in, in understanding that, that 
I need to make this amount every month to live the way I want to live and to be able to do the things I want to do. And knowing where you're at in the middle of the month or, you know, three quarters of the way through the month, oh, I'm going to be short by this amount. What do I need to do to make that up within the next couple of weeks or days or whatever? You know, so it's empowering. Totally. And it's okay. You know, don't beat yourself up if you don't make, make your goal. It's okay if you don't make, make it. It just gives you the incentive, okay, next month I also have to do this on top of my, my normal goal. So use it to incentivize yourself. And the key difference is you're now tracking a lot of things that you didn't even care about or weren't even looking at in starting your right. business, which is always shocking to me. You, the, the, the biggest shift I, that I had to make and that a lot of my students make is that you do have to care about the numbers. Doesn't matter if you don't like it. Doesn't matter if you don't want to do it. It got weird stuff about money or you don't want, you know, it, 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 that's what a business is. You look at it, the health of a business is measured by numbers. And now you have your hands around that. It's right. great. It's really, really great. What, uh, so let's talk about niche. What's, uh, what was the shifting that, uh, sorry, sorry, what was the thinking that shifted for you around niche? Because I'll tell you guys right now, because I have Carrie's application up from two and a half years ago. This is, I said, briefly describe your current massage practice is one of the things I ask. This is what you said. I have a mixture of clients. Some just relaxation, some are athletes, and some are therapeutic, which I'm sure at this point right now, you're like, what does that even mean? Like looking <laughs> back, right? That's why I love these applications. It tells me a lot. <laughs> you said, um, I would like more athletes and therapeutic clients. Right now, I offer massage, hot packs, and aromatherapy. I see between 10 and 15 clients a week. I charge $55 an hour, $6 add-on for hot packs, and $5 add-on for aroma, right? So... So, so it sounds to me like you were working on anybody with a pulse <laughs> and trying to figure out what the heck you were doing. So let's talk, tell us about niche and what that, what fears you had to walk through and just, you know, how that has helped your practice by defining a, a niche for yourself. When I opened my practice, um, I didn't know how to get people into my business or on my table. So one of the things I did was I put an ad in the paper in, in the local, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you believe she, can you believe she did that? You guys, no, I'm just kidding, you Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I spent almost $700 on an ad that went to 56,000 homes. Six people returned a coupon that I had in this ad out of 56,000 newspapers, six people. That's not even 1%. And I have one client out of that that still comes back. It costs you seven seven hundred dollars to get that client. That's an expensive client. <laughs> and it's taken this long probably to pay for that ad. I mean, and he's not one that comes every week or every two weeks. He just comes when he feels like he needs it. So he hasn't even paid. He for still comes for, for himself. Yeah, yeah. So wow. Um, just in trying to get anybody and everybody on your table doesn't work because then you're, you're, and I don't want to say the word competing. You're, you're not setting yourself apart from every other massage therapist out there. So setting yourself up with a niche, specializing in something sets yourself apart. And it doesn't mean you're, you're pigeonholing yourself. You're, you're, you're not, you're not, I don't even know how to say it. You're, you're not taking away from how many people you're going to get on your table. You, you are exponentially increasing it because those people are the ones that are specifically seeking you out to help them with their pain or whatever issue it is that, that they have. So set yourself apart by getting a niche. Specialize in something. And the people will flock to you. Because you're the one, maybe the only one in your area that does it. And having that niche for me, I don't even know how long it took. I didn't even track that part of it. How long it took by the time when I realized that this is what I want to do is the, the athletes in the injury and surgery recovery, my practice took off. Hmm. Enough said. Go, go figure, right? <laughs> you know? I know. 
that's the number one fear is it's going to limit you. It's going to pigeonhole you. You're not going to have enough clients. It's totally exactly. counterintuitive. And I have, it works a hundred percent of the time. I've never had anybody come back and say, I have no clients. Oh, I have a niche and now I've just totally narrowed my options. And now I have great. Now I don't, I'm now not working on anybody. It's literally the exact opposite. It's I have clients I love. I love working exactly. on them. They appreciate me. They value me. So are you, Char you've raised your rates. Please tell me you have, you've raised your yeah. rates. You're not at 55 yeah. an hour. Okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm actually, so I'm getting ready to, to raise them again, but um, I'm right now I'm at 70 an hour, mm -hmm. um, which is still a little low for the industry, but in my area, you know, with all of the water crisis stuff that's going on and, and all that yeah. other, you know, GM, GM is on strike right now and they've been on strike for a month now. So, wow. which I, you know, have a lot of, GM family members is, is clients, but, um, we are in kind of a depressed recessional area, you know, just trying to struggle through. So 17 hour is, is average here. Um, yeah. but being a specialist, I am going to raise my rates. So awesome. Yeah. Awesome. You know, and you, and is, you can, you can, once you know, your practice that you're booked three, four weeks out, you've shown that there's a demand in the market for your services. And absolutely. so you absolutely can raise your rates again because yep. you have clients that are paying 70, you have a good following. And then that's when you could actually raise your rates, you know? Absolutely. So great. So great. Um, what was the real underlying reason for you that you had to succeed at this? Why, why look, a lot of people, look, a lot of people struggle. Most of you know, most of you that are around 10 feet of me virtually or literally know that why I'm here is because I'm very aware that most massage therapists will never succeed. The majority of massage therapists do not succeed making a living, supporting themselves. They, all, they just struggle. They struggle forever. Now, the ones I work with have certain characteristics that I'm looking for before I even work with anybody, right? And, and part of that is a real need to make this work. Like, failure is not an option for you. So why was it so important for you to succeed at this beyond the obvious reasons of I need to make a living and that kind of thing? Was there an underlying motivation for you? Um, well, of course, you know, I'm my own sole provider, so it had to work mm -hmm. um, so that I could live. Um, I was going through a divorce, living with my parents when I opened my own practice. Um, and I felt for me, no one else is going to do it. I have to do it. I have to be successful. Um, and I felt like, I feel like this is what I am meant to do. Yeah. This is my God given calling to yeah. be a massage therapist, to help heal people. And I had to, I, I have to be successful at it. So in order to do that, I needed help. Yeah. You know, yeah, so. it's your dream. It, I mean, I know it, it is. It, and it's hard to say that it's an inconvenient truth which to tell massage therapists that the, the odds are totally against you. Uh, you know, in the United States in particular, the industry is really in trouble. It's actually really in trouble, right? And yet almost everybody that's in it, it's their dream. It's their dream of sorts, right? It was your dream to do this and to be successful at it. And absolutely, I don't like and watching people only, give up on their dreams, you know, it's not right. Cool. <laughs> right. So. Well, and, and the only way that I can help as many people as possible is to be as successful as possible. Right. Yep. And, and I then, didn't know how to do that until I went through the academy. Yeah, you were a good student. You're very coachable. <laughs> so, 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 so what, um, what, so where are you today as compared to where you were before? I shared some of your numbers that you would put on your, you know, your uh, information form before you got on the call, but I would just, just tell us a little bit more about, actually, before you say that, speaking of coachable, um, what were some of the things, or maybe one thing that I, I told you to do that was maybe not, aside from niche, obviously you're a little scared to declare a niche. Is there anything else that I had you do in the program that was a little, 
surprising to you with the results that you got? Um, I think setting your business up with integrity mm -hmm. means a lot. Um, it, I don't even know how to say it. I mean, it's just, if you're coming from a place of love, and have that intention with your clients, it's going to draw those clients to you. And I get, and I'm going to cry right now. <laughs> um, I get emotional with my clients. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I have a new client come in and they're telling me about their pain, um, I feel their pain. I've been there. Mm -hmm. um, and not a lot of people know this, but, Back, I don't even remember, it was 10, 2004 maybe, I had a severe back injury and I literally could not stand on my own two feet. I had to walk with crutches because my legs would completely just fail and I would fall to the floor. And I didn't have insurance at the time. And the only thing that I contribute to saving me is massage therapy and chiropractic. Wow. And this is a big reason why I chose to become a massage therapist because I know how much it heals. Yeah. And I want to do that for other people. Awesome. And I set my business up with that intention. Mm. And I think my clients feel that when they come in. So say, more about that. Come in say, say more about integrity, setting up with integrity, because we talk about that all the time. But say a little bit more about what that means for you or what that created for you? Just looking at it from that perspective. It means you're, I'm doing this from a place of love and I am, and I tell people I'm honest to a fault and I will take care of you to the best of my ability every time. And if I can't, I will either not work on you or I will refer you to somebody who I think can. Um, I set my, my business up with, so, so for example, we have a new building manager and I, we were talking the other day and he, I had told, you know, but somehow the, the thing came up about me having to go get my business license for the, the township so that I can operate. And he said, well, why, why would you go pay for that? You could have just moved in and they did never known and they wouldn't have cared because I'm honest to a fault. I set my business, I set my business up and run my business with integrity, mm -hmm. you know? So it's, it's those things mm. that even though nobody knows that it's, it's, it's that energy behind it that I want my business to have. I want my business to have that reputation of they're honest, they're fair, they're caring and, and, they always look out for their clients. They, their clients' interests are at the forefront, not the bottom line of making money. Yes, I want to make money, and I want to make a good living at doing it. I should be able to make money at what I love to do. But my, my bottom line is my care for my clients. And you should be getting 100% of that care 100% of the time. Yeah. And setting up. And <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> we have a little bit of a lag. I keep talking over you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you're, you're fine. You're fine. I was just going to say, you know, because I know those that are watching are kind of like, well, what is that? What's setting up your business with integrity? Like what? That's a Rebecca thing. That's what does that mean? Right. But what I want to point to is that when you have all your ducks in a row, not only with your alignment, with your intention and your business, but also you have all the structures in place that you need in order to actually have a real business and a thriving business, then and only then can you actually be present with your clients. Because if you know that you don't have a business license and you should, or if you know that say you're seeing clients out of your home and you're not zoned for that, you have one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake. And there's a lot of burning smells going on. There's a lot of, you know, you can't fully be present with your clients when you have this static in your head in the background of am I doing this right am I doing this right am I going to get in trouble am I doing this right you know which is so much of the struggle that massage therapists don't even realize 
is what's holding them back is that they're constantly second guessing everything that they're doing because they literally don't know how to do it. They don't know how to set up the business side of things. And so they just kind of throw bodies on a table, but we only know, we all know that's not sustainable, you know? Yeah. Nope. I love it. Okay. So now share about what, you know, just paint a little bit more of a picture about, you know, maybe your income, anything that you want to share with the, the income, the number of clients you were seeing before, where you are now. Um, uh, people love that. People love to see the before and afters, so to speak. So anything you want to so, share about that? So where I came from, I had spent, before I opened my practice, I spent the five years before that working for a chiropractor. And I was doing between 25 and 30 massages every week wow. um, and working six days a week. Wow. Just, yeah, just to make, I mean, I, I hustled. I mean, I killed myself just to make $35,000 a year. Wow. And I never did anything because all of that, you know, it's not a lot, you know, to live on, to sustain a living and, and everything on $35,000 a year. So when I left to open my practice and I found you and went through the academy, the first year I made, I think it was, I think it was $42,000. Well, I say, $42,000. 47 is what you said on your... 40, so notes. there you go. So <laughs> $47,000 in, you know, going from bringing home 35 to grossing 47 was mm -hmm. like, oh, <laughs> the second year I was in business, I grossed $60,000, just mm -hmm. over $60,000. This is my third year in business, you know, it's so... It was liberating. And I'm not killing myself. I'm not doing 28 massages every week, six days a week. You know, and for me, if I, if I do 18 massages in a week, that's a slow week, which is good. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that because the time that I'm not massaging, I'm, I can use to work on my business. Mm -hmm. um, but this year, I am on track to make $70,000 gross. Mm -hmm. You know, and it just keeps going up. So great, especially it's, since you're going to raise your awesome. rates again. You know, it is awesome. I'm getting ready to expand. I'm, I'm getting ready to bring on. So right now I have one renter um, and, uh, and I'm getting ready to bring on, on at least two more. So, wow. Going for the big it's, space. You know, yeah. it's, 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 it's a good thing. And I feel like this is the, the way I need to go and mm. I can reach more people and, and help more people with the more people that I have in, in my practice. So mm. what does that feel like to be meeting your goals and objectives and really doing this? Like you're doing it. She's legit you doing know? it. You guys <laughs> it's working. What does it feel like to you? I, I, it's, it's amazing. So for me, the light bulb went on the other day. Um, I'm able to easily afford to go on vacations. I, I actually can afford to go to Rebecca's retreat in November. Yeah! Yay! I get to squeeze you. Know? you. <laughs> I get to actually see you in person. I get to touch um, you. <laughs> you know, I just, be, you know, before when I worked at the chiropractor, I didn't get to do any of that because mm. I couldn't, and I don't want to say I couldn't afford it, I didn't have the income to be able to afford to do that mm. and working less making more money and doing the things I want to do it's it, it's humbling and is grateful I am so grateful it just mm. I I have bigger dreams I have bigger goals now and having the know-how how to, to get to it you know is is huge Super just, empowering. You know, I love it. I'm, I still, I still work on myself. I still have my own, my mindset that I work on every day, you know, getting past my own blocks and, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm living my dream so and my awesome. dreams keep getting bigger. So I have more goals to, to strive for. That's what happens. You hit your goals and then you're like, well, you I know? did that. What's next? You right? know, like, like you what's sweet. We want to expand, you know, you know, and I, 
I, I don't, I'm not, I don't want us to get stuck in the mentality of, oh, I have just enough. So reevaluating your goals, once you've hit a goal, you know, make it, make the next step. Oh, I made this goal. Now what? You know, so I guess I have bigger and better goals now than I did before, you know. So I always, always striving for, for the next step, always striving for the bigger dream. And you know, what I like about what you're saying <clears throat> is that it's not like you're coming back to me going, Rebecca, Rebecca, what should I do? Because I trained you, you are just doing it. I mean, every once in a while, I mean, we've talked, we're like, oh, help me make this decision about this new space or my landlord issue or whatever. And I'm totally fine as things pop up like that. But never at any point have you come back and said, oh, crap, now I really don't know what I'm doing. You still know what you're doing because you're trained how to run a business. And you have a map that you can use exactly. for the rest of your life. We solved all the problems you came in with. That's like, that's like done, right? That's a done deal. But that to me, where I get really excited seeing, you know, people that I've had the honor of serving two years later, you know, one year later, two years later, three years later, is when I go see that's the proof right there that we did. We got the job done. Carrie is that you're empowered and you're on your own and you're doing it. You, you, you don't need to come back and this and that. Yeah. There's other cool things we can do together and all that stuff, but you have the tools for the rest of your life to face whatever challenges you are encountering in growing your business and sustaining your business. And that to me, that's what, that's the most exciting part for me. It's like, it's like watching your baby go off to college or get married or something. You're like, ah, you know, you, you're on your own now. You've made it. You can survive on your own. You can thrive on your own. It's really cool. Well, in, in one of the best things about, you know, the Academy is, is having the support group behind it, you know, with, the with all the other people who've gone through it and then having, mm -hmm. you know, being able to go back through it. You know, mm -hmm. oh, I'm stuck on this. Well, you know what? Let's go back and see what Rebecca had to say. Is there something else there that mm -hmm. I could use or push myself or, you know, whatever yeah. it is to, to get past that hump? Yeah. So there's always, there's always the support group behind it. And, and you can always go back to those people and say, hey, has anybody done this? What, what was your experience? And so that, that's I get that too. feedback. Yeah. Well, and you yeah. said too, I think it was you that said earlier, maybe when we were talking right before, but maybe if it wasn't you, forgive me, but uh, I hear this sentiment a lot. So I'm sure you'll relate to it, but it's hugely lonely being an entrepreneur and, and doing this by yourself. It's like, I'm sure other people have done this. Certainly I don't need to, be, I'm not the first person to answer the question of how do I get clients or how do I raise my rates, you know? But massive value right. in being able to have a person that's done it or a team of people to support you. Or, and now what you have is a lifelong community of people that, you know, we all bleed the same blood and we're all committed to the same things. And we all, right. you know, have that to, to lean on each other. And that's huge. So. One of the things that, you know, we see in this industry, and I don't know why, is we have such a cutthroat mentality with other massage therapists you know, oh, you know, we have to compete on price or, you know, oh, don't see her or him or whatever, or they did this, that, or the other. You know, why we can't have a community of therapists that lift and uplift and support each other. You know, yeah. I, well, I just watched well, we video. Do. <laughs> right? right, exactly. That's what it should be, you know? I, I just watched a video the other day. Um, Simon Sinek, I think is how you say his name, was being yeah. interviewed by Liz yeah. House. Mm -hmm. And he, something he said really resonated with me and it was competition is finite, rivals is infinite. Mm. Find your rival. What are they doing better than you? And how can you incorporate that into your business? How can you use that to make you better? Yeah. And it was huge for me. So, yeah. It's, le it's yeah. learning from, it's learning from learning from each other. And I love having this think yeah. tank, not only this free Facebook group, but like, you know, obviously graduates of my program that have a whole other level of training um, and, and ability, but you're right. It's scary. And it, Carrie, it's because 
there's competition because a total scarcity mentality is a disease in this industry big time. Okay. There's not enough. There's not enough. There's not enough. People are won't pay more than $35. Oh my gosh. Uh, you know, like all that stuff. It's just rampant. It's just totally rampant. And I say that not from a judgmental place. I've been that person. I was like, Oh my gosh, who might have charged $40 an hour? You know, what all those things. Right. But then the other thing is, Massage therapists always compete on price because they don't have a niche. If everybody had a niche, if everybody had a niche, we would have a lot more successful massage therapists. hundred percent, you know, absolutely believe that. If everybody had a niche. You could have 17 massage therapists in the same place, all doing different things and even some doing the same things. And it doesn't matter because you do it the best way that you do it. And now your practice is full and you might go, oh, actually, there's somebody down the hall. I can't get you in for three weeks. But here, there's somebody else down the hall and she does amazing athletic work and injury recovery. And, and you're in this abundance because you're thriving because you know what the heck you're doing. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Exactly. Ah. What is it that oh. is there? Is there anything else? Any other final words of? Wisdom, you've had a lot of good things to share about niche and, oh, there was one other thing you mentioned about holding your client's feet to the fire. Oh, yeah. yes. So part of the integrity is don't let your clients walk all over you. Your time is precious to you and people are, people are wanting to get in to see you. So when, you know, hold, use your policies, hold your client's feet to the fire on your policies. Mm-hmm. You know, if someone no shows you or, or, you know, doesn't show up on time, hold their feet to the fire. Come from a place of integrity. If I let you slide one time, I'm going to let, you know, they're going to think I can let you slide all the time. Mm -hmm. Make them pay the no-show fees. Make them pay the, you know, shorten the, if they show up 20 minutes late, they get 20 minutes shorted on their time. Hold their feet to the fire. Because once you do that and they realize there is a price to pay for what they did, they will respect you more. And, and they will not, they won't do it again. Yeah. Like give, make them put skin in the game is what you always say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. hold their feet to the fire. Yeah. And make them, make them responsible for their actions and, and not at a cost to you at your own cost. It, yeah. It's huge. We're always afraid where they're going to hate us or we're going to lose clients. But when you actually demand anything, you demand something. And I don't mean being demanding. I didn't say being demanding. But when you require an investment of your clients and you're willing to lose them if they don't comply, the result is respect. Exactly. And if, they, if you lose them because of holding their feet to the fire, they were not meant to be your client anyway, and they are opening the door for somebody who is. Yeah, they're, they're not, I don't do business with people I don't respect and don't respect exactly. my time. Exactly. <laughs> You know, and it's hard to have that heart to heart. I've had heart to hearts with certain clients where I go, listen, I love you as a client and you have a habit of calling me one hour before your appointment asking if you can reschedule. I'm going to decline the opportunity to take you as a client if you keep doing that. I need to know when you schedule an appointment that you're going to show up because I rearrange my morning around your eight o'clock appointment and you got, you cannot do that to me anymore. And they're just like, they, they go, whoa. Like this person has, you know, it's an unconscious kind of thing. Right. But, but um, man, otherwise your clients are just running your practice and that's never going to work, you know? No. So no. love and, it. And if you don't, you don't want somebody around who's never going to, you know, who doesn't, they, they do that because they don't value massage mm-hmm. and they don't value the work you do. Yeah. This is the doggy. It's okay. Doggy. <laughs> Dogs are welcome on the Facebook live. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's a really it's a really important subtle fine tuning thing that can make a world of difference. So, well, and when you do that, you res- you're you're actually respecting yourself too. Yeah. When you hold your clients' feet to the fire, you're respecting yeah. yourself and you're respecting yeah. your time. And yeah. If you don't respect yourself, your clients aren't going to respect you either. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, I don't respect myself, but you should respect me. You know that doesn't work. There's no integrity in that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Ah, I'm so proud of you. I love you so Thank much. You. I just, I, I feel, too. I really, I feel so blessed. Like every time, and I, I, I watch all these people that are watching live, you know, because it tells me who's watching, and it's like there's Caitlin and and there's Mindy who used to work at Salt Lake Prenatal Massage, and there's Marcy who I worked with, and Stephanie. Like, see all these people, and I'm just like, ah, oh, I just am so honored to be a part of this beautiful global 
family, you know, for, I mean, whether you guys have worked with me or not, it's like, this is part of this family. You're all hanging out in my living room and my Facebook group. And especially those of you that I get the honor to, to serve, you know, really get in, get my hands on your practice and my eyeballs on your problems and, and, and help you get what you want. You know, my calling in life is that people win. That's my calling is around me. People get what they want. You know, they get shifts, they get miracles, they get results. Like that's, that is my purpose for being on this planet. And it is just like, it's a joy for you to bring in those right, perfect people that you just cry with and you just love to, to work. I feel the same way. I see you guys out there and I just think, man, you know, so proud, just so proud of you for dealing with the stuff that you had to deal with on the inside, your own inadequacies, your own fears, your own uh, you know, terror when it comes to standing up for yourself or making something of yourself, but also carry the courage it takes to be, um, you know, to be on your own. You provide for yourself. You know, you are totally successful in every measure, which is, so for me, success is doing what you love, making a difference and making a living. And right? you've, got, you've got it all, girl. So... Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Thank I really you. appreciate it. I know we had to reschedule you. We, we had audio issues like weeks ago when we first tried to do yes. this. We had to just abandon ship. But what was great about that was that's when we started testing them out in the graduate group before we go live. So that was because <laughs> of you. We invented a whole new procedure and it's worked beautifully <laughs> since. So happy that we were able to get you back in here and, um, you know, really just thank you for for being for trusting me thank you for trusting me and thank you for just thank you your commitment and I'm, I'm so excited to actually physically meet you in person at our I'm so at excited our event. I know it's gonna be great I can't so. wait to meet every all the other students too it's gonna be great you, <laughs> know, you, you see like... their faces and the and the little pictures on Facebook and you know you, you talk with people but to actually physically see them and meet them is gonna be huge you know it's gonna take my just... breath away I think I'm just gonna cry yes. for like the first 30 minutes of our retreat just because <laughs> because of what it represents for me to be able to serve you guys and have like literally never physically met you and to totally be in your life and then to actually just be in your, in your presence. It's going to be magical. So very excited. Be awesome. Excited. All right. Well, thank you. Enjoy thank the rest you. of your day. You have clients you today? You too. You have, are you I do. You? I'm on my lunch hour right now. So oh, good. Yep. Cool. I have, I have to be back at my time is three o'clock. So giddy up. All right. Yep. All right, my dear. We'll have a blessed day and we'll talk to you soon. You too. Thank you. Okay, bye. 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 Isn't that so awesome, you guys? What did you learn? Okay. What did you learn? Tell me in the comments. You know, what are you hearing? What questions do you have? Uh, what are you what are you thinking of here? You know, because there's a lot that you could have gotten from this. And and bottom line is, you know what I love about Carrie is again, 11 years into her career. It's never too late to reinvent yourself. It's never too late to learn that new skill. It's never too late to just, you know, to go all in and get that focus and that clarity so that you can get what you want. Um, super important to also have the support of people that know how to do this. You guys truly like, I am so serious about this. Struggle is optional. Struggle is totally optional. You don't have to figure this out on your own. We got it all sorted out. It's amazing. All the pieces, all the components, you know, and um, that's why, that's why I do this. Cause I didn't have that. I didn't have that. If I'd had a, a, you know, a community like this, if I had had a mentor like me, if I had had the, somebody with the wisdom and insight that could have taken me by the hand, you know, 24 years ago, 25 years ago, when I started my practice, my life would have been totally different, you know? So Consider that. Consider your future and consider what it is that you want and what you're here to do on this planet. A couple of things I want to throw out to you guys. You know, what does it mean to you to run your business with integrity or set up your business with integrity? What does that mean to you? And are you doing that? And why? And what kind of results does that provide for you? Um, also, you know, niche. That's a question I get a lot. You know, does a niche limit you? I, I, we've proven over and over again, a niche, a niche does not limit you. It does not limit you. It makes you visible and it eliminates the competition. And that's something that I would love to see as a global movement in our, in our industry. So, all right, you guys. Well, if there's anything else that you need, just let me know. I'll put it in the comments below. Um, also, if you need support, if you are dying for help or you're curious about what I do, just check it out at rockyourmassagepractice.com. 
rockyourmassagepractice.com. Sorry, sometimes I say that best. Um, there's a lot of great resources, free resources in this Facebook group. You can go back and watch all the interviews that we've done, all the Facebook lives I've done. My team is in the process of putting all of those up on a YouTube channel, you guys, and different playlists and stuff so that you can, you know, just um, – hit that auto play button while you're cleaning the cleaning the office and filing papers and things like that you know tons and tons of free resources in this group as well as the 60 minute webinar five shifts for creating your successful massage practice even if you're surrounded by competition uh that's available on my website as well and then of course my very high level by invitation only mentoring program um, anyone can apply, but not everybody gets in. So we're very serious about your success. We want to make sure that you're in the right time and the right place and that you really have problems that we fix. And uh, we offer those free 60-minute discovery calls with me or Coach Amy to really look with you and see what your problems are and what you need to do to fix them and where it is that you want to go. Those are hugely valuable. So if you're in a place where you're really just needing help and don't know why it's not working or just tired of struggling and really want to find a way out, then I would invite you to go ahead and grab one of those spots on our calendar. And you can do that at rockyourmassagepractice.com on the work with me page. All right, you guys have a fantastic day. Thank you for being a part of my community. We'll talk to you soon.